um, reduce the risk of recurrence as well um, of cancer. So, but not for that specific purpose. And yes, it is definitely. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Kidney Coach YouTube channel. I am Fiona Chin, qualified naturopath and co founder of Kygenesis and the Kidney Disease Solution. And I'm joined today by the beautiful Emily Cahill. And so, why don't we just start with an overview of what is melatonin? What is this? Is it a hormone? Is it a chemical? Where does it come from? Who, what, what part of the body just produces it? Is it only in a pill? Do we make it ourselves? Why don't we start there? So melatonin is a hormone and it's produced by our pineal gland, which is in our brain. It's down there somewhere. Um, and it's it, a pineal gland. Of, yeah, of course, pineal <laughs> gland. Um, I know. Um, and so, yeah, it's made in the, I'm going to say pineal cause I don't like pineal. Um, the pineal gland from, uh, serotonin. So serotonin is one of our neurotransmitters. Um, so it gets converted from serotonin into melatonin and we release it uh, in response to light, um, light and darkness. So traditionally it's known and you know often only known for its role in sleep so melatonin is our sleep hormone if you want to call it that and what that means is that during the day while we're awake our melatonin levels drop um and then as we're getting closer to the evening what should happen um, it, and when we're starting to be exposed to more darkness, our melatonin levels rise. Um, and that's when we release most of our melatonin, which helps us feel sleepy, um, and fall asleep and then helps us stay asleep during the night, um, as well. So, uh, I would say it generally when it's prescribed and probably every time I've seen it. Um, prescribed, it's prescribed to help people with sleep and that's often the only thing it's used for medically. So one of the other actual areas that there is a bit of research, you know, they have been looking quite a little, quite a lot at with melatonin is its anti-cancer, um, activities and anti-cancer potential as well. Um, so again, this is largely to do with the, its antioxidant, um, properties but it's being trialed, um, alongside chemotherapy, um, and alongside conventional treatment, um, for people with cancer and showing to improve outcomes, reduce the risk of recurrence as well, um, of cancer. So that's a really interesting area that is starting to become a little bit more known about. Um, and then it also has benefits in terms of cardiovascular disease, can help to lower cholesterol. Um, again, as I think I mentioned, it can help to lower blood pressure. Um, it's been shown to be protective against um, heart attack, stroke, hard, the atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. Um, and studies in animals have shown that it can actually protect the kidneys um, and the brain against high blood pressure. So again, we spoke about diabetes being the number one of cause of kidney disease. And then we've got high blood pressure being the second highest cause. So, um, yeah, important that it, it can actually protect against that damage. Just thinking back to the cancer, because that's an area that you have such a special interest in. Are you seeing that being used at all mainstream or is it something that you, are you prescribing more melatonin now in cancer and what specific cancers or what? What would you have to see in a patient, maybe blood-wise or symptom-wise, that would make you think, well, oh, maybe I should be thinking about using melatonin? Yeah. Um, I just thinking, I don't think I've had a patient. No, I have not had a patient who's been with cancer, who's been prescribed melatonin by their doctor for their cancer. I do have some who may have been prescribed melatonin to help with sleep. Um but not for that specific purpose. And yes, it is definitely something that I am recommending more and more um, that people go and ag again in Australia, it's prescription only. So um, go to their GP or oncologist and ask 
to um, be prescribed to melatonin. Um, who would I use it for? Look, the studies are pretty widespread in terms of the types of cancers um, that it's shown to be beneficial for. There is, and again, is this just because there's often more studies in, say, breast cancer than there are in other studies that we're seeing a lot of benefits there, quite possibly. Um, but that's definitely an area where it, uh, a type of cancer where it has been more well-researched. Um, and then also, you know, particularly if someone is having problems sleeping, um, high stress levels, all of those things that I know means that their melatonin is going to be low, then that particularly would be um, where I would recommend it. So if you've liked this video, remember to give us a like, hit subscribe, and then you'll get notified anytime a um, new video comes along. If there's anything you want Emily and I to talk about, or if you want me to get any other guests on, let us know in the comments section. I read both all the time. Emily, thank you again for your information and sharing with our tribe. Um, yeah, hit like, hit subscribe. We'll talk to you next time. And thanks for being part of our community. We really value and appreciate you guys. And we really hope this information helps. Bye. <laughs>